Hey YouTube, aka Soggy Buns here, and today I have a very special announcement. .NET Core version 1.0.1 has been released just a couple weeks ago. And what does that mean for us? It means so many things. It means that we have cross-platform .NET development for developers that are .NET developers, which is great news for us. It means we have such, such, so much tools, so much capabilities on our hands. Um, that we have the ability to use .NET, use C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, Visual, Bas Visual Basic is coming soon, and all of the DLLs and libraries that are made available through the C Sharp language. It's pretty awesome. So if you notice here, I have Visual Studio up, and I'll mention later that you don't necessarily need Visual Studio to use .NET Core, but that's what we're using here today. So what I did is I did the Visual Studio uh, 2015 update version three, and then I went to the website and downloaded the .NET Core framework. And I'll show you where to get that later. So if you look here at the .NET Core, you have .NET uh, just the libraries. That's just for making DLLs. You have .NET. You have a Core console and Core web applications. So what I'm going to going to do here is I'm going to open up the web application and kind of show you just kind of a preview, a little taste of what the .NET Core looks like and some of the the abilities that we'll have that with the .NET Core that we won't have to necessarily host on a Windows server. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and open that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the the web application. I'm gonna just go ahead and click OK. Just gonna hit click web application. I'm gonna go in here and change the authentication to no authentication. Just press OK and then we'll go ahead and we'll press OK. I'll let Visual Studio do its thing real quick. Alright, so you see here's the ASP.NET Core welcome screen when you first make the web application. If you notice the file structure is in an MVC with the controller and view um, framework style. Now if you, as you see we can host an ISS Express or we can host it directly on the .NET, ca .NET Core runtime. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll click the dot web application one which is the .NET Core web um, runtime. Go ahead and click Firefox and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And if you'll notice, usually the, the first time when you first build one of these .NET cores is the, the runtime is still getting initialized, so it doesn't work on the initial one. So what I go ahead, I let it kind of run for a second and let it kind of do its thing, initialize a little bit. Then I go ahead, go back into Visual Studio and go ahead, stop it and restart it. And you'll feel, we'll see, I'll pull up the runtime here. Here's the runtime running, it's initial, initializing right now. All right, it's finished initializing, and there's our web view. As you can see, it's it's amazing, and it has the default uh, Bootstrap theme that Bootstrap MVC theme that .NET does, and you can use uh, Razor code. That's the HTML showing. You can use C Sharp for the back end to do it. So let's go ahead and let's look at the .NET Core actual website. So this is where you can actually download the .NET Core runtime and SDK for your Visual Studio or Whatever, whatever you're using. So as you can see, Windows, Linux, I had a Ubuntu, uh, runs on Mac and Docker. I forgot to mention it runs on Docker, which is awesome. Here's some installations on how to install it for Red Hat. I'll probably do a video on, on how to install it for Ubuntu uh, later on. But just like I said before, I got the Visual Studio Update 3 and then I got the .NET Core. Uh, this is an actual download I got, but the, got the, get the .NET Core um, download. And then, oh, and the, the really neat thing is, is you don't necessarily have to use Visual Studio to develop in .NET Core. You can even use Visual Studio Code, which is free, and it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac. Um, they said that you can use the .NET Core runtime in Sublime and some other text editors, so that's, it's really awesome. You're not um, limited to Visual Studio and, and simply Windows, which is really neat about .NET Core is we had the, the abilities of .NET, but we're not tied down to Windows and the licenses. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is .NET Core is open source. It's supported by Microsoft, but it's uh, it's uh, contributed by the community, the .NET Core community. So that's really awesome. Again, we get all the libraries and all those things. 
some of the libraries we get is like signal arm and what I'll do is an, I'll do a video on signal arm maybe do a little um, chat with real-time chatting but anyways if you're excited as excited for dotnet core as I am go ahead and give this video a like if you're not go ahead and dislike it leave some comments below of some dotnet core videos you would like to see and let me know if you, you get it downloaded for yourself I hope to see you in the next video